Miss Palmer. This is not, you can tell what is what. So. Join the fight against corruption with U.S. Corrupt cops. We're uncovering cases where innocent individuals are targeted by corrupt officers. Subscribe, like, and share to demand justice. If you like this video, press 1 on October 5th, 2020. When news of the incident first emerged, it spread like wildfire across multiple channels. I opted to hold off until further updates surfaced. While the case is still ongoing, numerous events have transpired since the initial incident. The San Angelo Police Department dispatch received a report of an intoxicated individual causing disturbances in the parking lot of a nearby Walmart. I'm pretty sure he's on drugs though, he's got a kid in the car, and he was, you know, harassing people in the parking lot. He's white, about 5'9", curly brown hair, carrying a t-shirt and jeans. The description provided was for a Caucasian male, approximately 5 feet 9 inches tall, with curly brown hair, dressed in a t-shirt and jeans. However, Jack, the defendant, was wearing gray pajama pants and stands only 5 feet 6 inches tall. Upon arrival at the scene, the defendants located the reported vehicle. It's important to note that security personnel are currently unaware of the situation, as the entirety of the incident stems from a single phone call to 911. Five, five foot nine male with brown curly hair with a three-year-old. Mayberry is in the store looking around. Okay. I'll hang out at the vehicle if you want to go in. Okay. Security here hasn't... Uh, doesn't have anything on him. Nobody in the store has seen him or even know what he really looks like. He didn't see a guy the... with a three-year-old in there. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go back in. Okay. All right. But, uh, I mean, nobody in the store was really okay. helpful. The defendant split up to search for their suspect. Weber then uttered a statement that would later turn out to be false. Hadn't done anything wrong. I got nothing to worry about. Less than two minutes later, Defendant Mayberry finds Jack and starts questioning him. Hey, man. Can I talk to you for a minute? Got nothing going, man. Um, have you been talking to anybody around here? Talking to you. Oh, we've got, we've got calls that someone's out here harassing people, and they may be drunk. You, been, you haven't had anything to drink tonight, nothing like that? Nothing? Can you blow in your face? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. So you haven't had anything to drink today or anything like that? You're just getting off work or something? No, no. Okay. Okay. Huh? What's your name? Jack. Huh? Jack? Jack. Jack what? Uh, the Okay. Yeah, it does. It does matter. You guys got to use that to put No. At this juncture, Jack has disclosed his first name to the officers, but is currently declining to furnish his identification. Under Texas Penal Code 38.02, failure to identify constitutes a criminal offense if an individual refuses to provide identification to a peace officer who has lawfully detained them. It's important to note that failure to identify is a secondary charge, and since Jack was not under arrest at the time, he was not obligated to even provide his first name to the officers. Jack even tried to elucidate section 38.02 to them, but their lack of understanding of this fundamental penal code led to the events that ensued. I don't, I don't think you understand what this is. This is not, you can tell what is what. So. You're saying I have to look, my name just look, we're we're not trying to hand me up or anything. We're trying to make sense of what's going on because someone's telling us that someone is possibly driving drunk with a child in the car. They gave us your vehicle and a description of you. Did you have a description at all, sir? I just said that he had brown curly hair. That was it. Unknown description of. They gave us your vehicle and a description of you. Okay. So I mean. You can either make this long, drawn out, and difficult, and keep your son out well, here you with all your groceries. See, you see what? That I'm not drunk, right? I don't know that. You mean all you did is tell me that? Well, I'm okay, I think. Okay. Well, we're trying to verify who you are, and you're making that difficult. It's not that hard to just hand over an it's ID. It's not that hard for me to go about my day. 
I haven't even been drinking or doing anything, but I don't, I mean, tell me I'm forced to ID myself. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Just to verify who you are. What well, are going to do the last time? Well, Gary's going to do it. Verify who I am. Because sometimes people are so different, like, love and food. Okay? Uh -huh. Really, I want to verify who you are. Go back to the day when you were born already, and we'll be done. That easy, that simple, man. My partner's explained their routine. Hey, okay. Can you meet me? I want to ID. Is he refusing to ID? Yeah. Okay, bud. This is an intoxicated subject call. Okay. Okay. So, this is what's probably going to happen if it hasn't been explained to you already. Unless you identify yourself for this legal investigation, you're going to be arrested for failure to ID. Listen to me. And then we're going to call CPS to come pick up the kid. Okay, so now you're threatening. So, what's your ID? My What's your identification? What's your name, dude? Can I talk? I mean, y'all work. You have one work thing work to respond with right now, and that's to identify yourself. The three defendants move in to arrest Jack, pinning him against the refrigerator and applying pain compliance techniques to his arms and neck, pushing his throat against the corner of the refrigerator. One of the Walmart employees picks up Jack's son and brings him into the security office. Jack is unlawfully searched, taken outside, and put into a police cruiser. Don't walk him out. All right. Oh. Okay, baby. Hey, Daddy. Daddy's okay. Yeah. Walk with me, please. <laughs> Not right now. Daddy's okay. He's just gonna talk to you. Mama's at her house, I guess. She is. Did y'all talk? She's coming? I don't know. We haven't found that out yet. Okay. So. I was just trying to calm the baby. Good morning. Good morning. Come right over here. Come here, young fool. Can I call him? Yeah, I'm going to get my yeah, shit. Come on, young fool. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Well, I'll deal with that in a little bit. Have a seat. Three. Have a seat. Do you, wanna, do you guys want to do anything with this guy? Um, what, was, what was he doing? Today? Well, we got a call for an intoxicated driver with a three-year-old in the vehicle, and they they determined that was that guy. Yeah. And then. Um, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you he refused to ID, then he resisted. Okay. Well, I mean, there's really not a whole lot we can do here. Oh, so it's, it's up like, to you. Imagine, Just giving you yeah. the. Yeah, no, 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 it'll be okay. Okay. Eventually, Sergeant Holt arrives at the scene and enlightens his officer about their serious errors. We were told he was the same. We were trying to make as quick as pain as we could to try and get this over with. But he was actually arrested in that place. Okay. We don't have any other arrestable charge. 
no disorderly conduct, anything no. like that? No, sir. Okay. All right. Um, release him. Okay. Explain to him um, that there was a, a mistake in understanding of the law. Okay. And uh, that he's free to go. However, it is best. When asked by a police officer who he is, to give his name. Because no, it's not required. It is always best to just give your name if you've been told you've been lawfully detained. Sergeant Holt orders Jack's release and returns his son to him. Defendant Francis releases Jack but continues to disrespect him. Despite having 3,802 just explained to him recently, Defendant Francis still doesn't understand it. Relax. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to slam you. Okay? Just, no. Just let me look at your wrist. Okay? Calm down. Turn your hand. Is yours or mine? Never mind. Yours? All right. Mr. Miller, after talking with our sergeant, you got your stuff out of the way. You have a misunderstanding and interpretation of the law. I'm trying to. Okay. You let me finish, please. Uh, I'm trying to find out. I need to get back to my sign. Okay, your okay. sign is fixing to come out of my office. Okay, well, I. What's going to happen is that. I don't, there was... I don't have a Okay, Is there anything I have to do from here on? No, I was going to let okay. you know. There's going to be okay. a, there's going to be a report and document everything, sir. You're free. I know I'm free to go. Here you go. I what happened? I talked to Holt, explained the whole way everything. Holt said it's not going to be good. He said it was, unless they're lawfully detained. So we never told him he was detained. We just went to to him. He had to, we were investigating the talk state subject call and all that. asked for his information. Holt said it's not going to be good. He said the felt that he's not going to fit. All three of us looked over it, read over it. doesn't fit. Holt said to release him. Is he intoxicated? Unless there's something I missed that you caught, I... Just his speech, his manner of speech? No. It came across to me that he was into... I thought you guys had already made that determination. No. We haven't gone that far. So, we'll, everybody is... Um, we'll all write a report. I guess we'll all, Oh, yeah. Somebody... One of us on this show, the other one's up. How are we going to figure it out? What happens? You got your own phone, your own phone? No. Oh, yeah. What are you in? Just, let's try to make sure. Look, I, I thought for happen. sure he was detained for a no. PI. No, he may be detained. But until he's actually under arrest, arrest, he doesn't have to give a name, date of birth, anything. Okay. But he also can't, while he's detained, he can't give a false name. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. This is... There's been confusion about failed ID as long as I've been here. I've seen people charged with failed ID on a consensual contact. There's no such thing. There is. There's no such thing because there shouldn't be any. Why officers still think they have the right to demand a free man's papers during a consensual contact is bewildering. When the department posted about the incident on Facebook, they included the body cam footage without redacting Jack's full name address, date of birth, driver's license number, as well as his mother's name and phone number. The post was taken down 36 hours later, but considering this entire encounter was over Jack asserting his Fourth Amendment right not to identify himself, it's quite intriguing that once the department knew who he was, they exposed him. It's unclear whether it was intentional or malicious. Jack filed an official complaint against the involved officers Defendants Francis and Weber were given the maximum of up to 15 unpaid extra duty days instead of suspension for violating 3,802 and engaging in conduct unbecoming of an officer. The videos of the investigation conducted by the Professional Standards Division were recently released. Defendant Francis admits to a misapplication of the law resulting in an unlawful arrest. He assures the investigators that he has now reviewed 3,802, but then fails miserably in articulating his interpretation of it. Looking back at now, I'm probably looking at it as a consensual, is probably more, we were probably handling more as a detainment at that time. It should have been just handled as consensual, and just, we should have been done with it. So he was being detained? Yes, sir. 
and refusing to identify himself? Yes, sir. Okay. At that time, what was your uh, understanding of, of the law pertaining to being detained and refusing to ID yourself? I was looking at looking at the charge of field ID. Based that on him not giving us the information who he was. Because what like I said, what was your understanding? You felt like somebody being detained had to give you their name? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've yeah. since since I've re educated myself, talked with Sergeant Guido. The next day me and him sat there for I don't know, fifteen, twenty, thirty minutes. I can't give an exact time frame, but he sat there and me and him looked at it and he, we talked about it, explained it to me. Um, I've looked at it since then also just to keep myself refreshed and stuff like that. So a person being detained, what's the law say? What's the penal code say about giving their name? Um, if it's a lawful detainment, then yes, they have to give, they have to identify themselves to us. If, if it's a lawful detention? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, what, what's your understanding? Just so I'm clear, just what is your understanding if you have somebody detained and they don't want to give you the name? Um, if they don't want to give his name at that point, that's when I would go to effect arrest. But. And, and you spent time reviewing that law since then? I haven't looked at it recently. I looked at it for a few, probably for a few days and weeks after it. Um, well, that's, that would be, that would be not correct. Uh, you, um, uh, you, you, you could not, uh, force someone to give a name unless they're arrested. Okay. And that's, that's the kind of the heart of, of this is, is that, is that if they're, de if they're detained and they give a false name, then, then you can arrest them for fail to identify if they are lawfully detained and they provide false information. But if they just don't tell you the name, then they, they have to be arrested for another offense. Not, not okay. Then I need to reread again and correct myself. Yeah. Looking back now, I have no, I screwed up. I mean, I'm not gonna sit there and lie about it. I'm not gonna cover it up. Yeah. I made a mistake and I recognize that. Do you feel like the, uh, the force you used was justified based on his resistance? At the time, yes. Now, no. You don't think so? The complete interview is accessible on Jack's channel. Officer Weber's and Mayberry's interviews, along with the arrest footage, are also provided in the links below. Jack proceeded to sue the three officers for his wrongful arrest and the infringement of his Fourth Amendment rights. The lawsuit is ongoing and may require some time to resolve or go to trial. The following video is presented by the YouTube channel Direct D. How many times have we looked into this specific department? How many crimes can a group of law enforcement officers commit? The last time we examined the Mesa Police Department, we observed about five police vehicles conducting traffic stops. However, the issue was that four out of the five police vehicles had expired registrations themselves. This department is gaining notoriety for its hypocrisy and lawlessness, while simultaneously arresting citizens who have not broken any laws. For those of you unfamiliar with the Mesa Police Department, you might think I'm exaggerating. We're about to witness a group of Mesa police officers arrest a man simply for recording. They claimed he was trespassing, but I'm still trying to understand how. Was he trespassing while standing on the public sidewalk and on a public easement? I'm actually not trespassing. I'm standing on a meter. It's dumbass. Sick over I'm standing, you guys. It says I'm trespassing. <laughs> it says I'm trespassing right here. <laughs> Morning cover, M Star. I 
Ms. Palmer. So I've already been threatened with trespassing right now. This idiot said I was trespassing by standing right here. Ain't been here two seconds. Wouldn't that be crazy if you could get arrested for trespassing just off the sidewalk? It's not that crazy because you can. This idiot will probably do it. Go ahead. I'm showered and ate up. What I'm doing is actually staying off the sidewalk so I'm not blocking it. That's Palmer right there, you guys. Oh, I know. Yeah, see the private property sign is over there. I'd have to go on the other side of that. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Loser. You can't be trespassing on utilities, you moron. This is what dumb cops do, though. They threaten you. You don't like my anonymous mask? So this looks like you might want to arrest me right now, folks, just FYI. I'm going to eat this one because I'm standing where I'm allowed to be standing, so. This will be a great lawsuit. What do you think the, the, the property line is for here? You, you think that these, these utilities are the property line? You think he's sitting on their property or is he still on public property right there? trying to get approval to arrest me right now. How much you want to bet? This is my positioning. This is the sidewalk. He wants to arrest me so bad. We'll see if Palmer's cat's open. For what? So, in the state of Arizona, there are approximately four trespass laws. You have criminal trespass in the first degree, which is a felony. 
Then you have criminal trespass in the second degree, which is a misdemeanor. Additionally, there's second degree criminal trespass, also a misdemeanor, and third degree criminal trespass, which is also a misdemeanor. The closest one I could figure out that they may be referring to when they mention trespass is the third degree criminal trespass, which is a misdemeanor. But let's read it again, I don't understand it. Criminal trespass in the third degree. A person commits criminal trespass in the third degree when they enter or remain unlawfully on any real property after the owner or any other person with lawful control over the property has asked them to leave. But the problem is yes, there was a business nearby, but he never stepped onto the business property. Secondly, even if he did step onto the business's property, the owner never came out for him to leave. On June 16th, 2023, Mr. Sean, a well-known auditor in the community, headed to the Connecticut State Police Headquarters to exercise his First Amendment rights and request documentation related to a previous incident involving Sergeant Brian Fay from the Connecticut Police Department. Sergeant Fay had previously assaulted Mr. Sean without any justification. I'm gonna be going. Okay. So you're gonna stand I, here with your cell phone. I thought I thought you were busy. I thought you were a busy I am. man. I am so, busy. So you should you should get to work. I should I should get to work. Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. We're gonna have a problem between you and I. We're gonna have a problem between you and I. We're gonna do an interference. His body camera's on. Hey. Okay. okay. Can I grab no, my cell you phone? No, stay right here. I'll get it for you. I'll get it. For All right. You. Where's your car? Where's your car? Where's your car? I'm gonna go, man. I'm going. I'm going. All right, no, but where's your car? I didn't even know where my car's at. You were about to arrest me, man, for real? I, I, I Is had your to body camera on? Yeah, my body camera's on, buddy. I'm Trooper Castell, 1139. Yep. Wow. Listen, with the situation you that you're going to arrest me for real? We're going to detain you over what the situation was going on, man. You hear me? I'm leaving. Conversation's over. Go ahead. I'm Sergeant Fay assaulted Mr. Sean for recording an activity protected by the First Amendment, violating his constitutional rights. Despite this, Sergeant Fay faced no consequences as his department cleared him of any wrongdoing. In 2023, Mr. Sean returned to the same headquarters to submit a FOIA request using his right under the Freedom of Information Act to access information held by government agencies, including police records and body camera footage. Returned to the Connecticut State... I can't hear you. Yeah, can I get your name and badge number? Yeah, it's 854. And your name? I'm Trooper Keo. Trooper Keo? Yeah, what do you need? 854? Yeah. No, I don't need anything help with anything, okay. Trooper. Well, what are you out here doing? Oh, I'm just taking a walk around, that's okay. all. And why are you recording? Aren't you recording? Yeah, but I have to. I so choose I'm to. I'm interacting with the public, so I have uh, to be recording. And I choose to because I'm interacting with a law enforcement officer. But you've been recording, we've been having reports of you out here for a while, been recording. Re reports, of, reports of someone recording? Being suspicious, walking around, because this is a, a building with important people and things in here. So, are you important because you have a uniform no, I'm on? No, saying not me. Well, who's important that's because inside of this have building? A crowd of people in there. Yeah, who's important? Civilians. So oh, it, here, it wouldn't be the. It wouldn't be they the. They are coming here asking why there's. This is a man the Connecticut State. Recording. This is the Connecticut State Police Headquarters, correct? And they're asking why you're recording. We have civilians coming up to me asking why a man is recording. They feel uncomfortable. Civilians are coming up civilians. to you asking why. Yes. I'm recording because yes. it's suspicious. Yes. How is it suspicious? Because you're reporting in a parking lot. Do you live here? Are you here for a I don't a reason? live in the parking lot, no. Are you here for a reason? I am here for a reason. What's the reason? I don't know if I want to disclose that to you at this point, just because it might compromise what I'm working on here, but what's so suspicious about a man recording? You're in a, an area that's public, which you, you are free to be, but you're recording and making it look suspicious. So you're you're being a threat to the civilians that are coming up to me and complaining about you. So because I'm, let me just get this straight, Trooper. So because I'm recording, I'm a threat to, you, to your very important people that are inside of this you building. You are being suspicious. To my civilians that I protect on a daily basis, yes. I don't think you met the the, the, the two civilians that are inside. No, I, think, I have a line of civilians. I have more than 20 people inside of just civilians that don't I, even work for the state. Yeah. But they came up to me and said that they feel threat by threatened by you recording because you look suspicious. So you came out here to, to do what? To ask you to leave. Why? Because you're making the civilians feel uncomfortable. Let's move out of this woman's way. 
you're making the, the, the people in this, in this building feel uncomfortable. They are coming here to get their pistol permits or fingerprints, and you're making them feel uncomfortable. By recording? You have, yes. You look suspicious out here recording, so they're reporting suspicious activity. Okay, and you're responding to that suspicious yes. activity? But I don't Why understand. Why is that a problem? It, I mean, it, I think it's a problem because there's nothing su suspicious about... It is a man recording in a parking lot. Why are you doing that? I don't think that's suspicious. Yes, it is. On a building that holds a lot of people? Yeah, very, very important people, suspicious. I know. Very important people Civilians inside. Civilians are important people. You don't think so? I think everybody's important. Exactly. Everybody's important. Exactly. I didn't say anything different. Okay. So, again... This is public. You just said it's public property. Yes, but we can ask you to leave if you're making if you're making people feel uncomfortable and doing suspicious activities. What? What? Just minutes into recording the headquarters from outside, Mr. Sean was approached by a trooper who asserted that his actions were suspicious and could be deemed a threat. Needless to say, this was an absurd assertion, one that ran counter to the protections of the First Amendment, as we have already discussed. According to the American Civil Liberties Union of Connecticut, it is explicitly stated that when in outdoor public spaces where you are lawfully present, you have the right to capture any image that is in plain view. This includes pictures and videos of federal buildings, transportation facilities, including airports, and police officers. Additionally, it is emphasized that the police should not instruct you to cease taking pictures or video. GS Connecticut General Statute is making people feel uncomfortable, Trooper? You're asking me why people are feeling uncomfortable. I don't know why they're feeling uncomfortable. No, no, I don't you're know why. Okay. Yeah, I don't. They're best no, them why no. I'm my, to my, it? my question was, Trooper. Yeah, my, my question was what Connecticut general statutes. A breach of peace. A breach of the peace. It could be. No, if we you're wrong. To. No, you're wrong. If we decide to. I promise you, you're wrong. A breach of the peace has to come with an act or a threat of violence. And they you should, felt threatened. You should, and an act or a threat of an violence, act Trooper. Or, did you say or? Yeah, an, an act, act or a threat of this violence. Is the act. This is an act of violence. You are, you are making. It's an act or a threat of violence, you're trooper. You're making people feel uncomfortable because they don't know what you're doing. I can't prove anything right now to you. Well, but there I is no violation of Connecticut general statutes right now. Leave. No, you cannot. Yes, I can. You said this is public property. Yeah, but if you're doing something to disturb people, is that's that, a problem. Well, disturb. What? What is? What is the Connecticut general statute for disturb, ma'am? Well, if you know everything, you can tell me, right? There is none. I, I, for, for breach of the peace, there sure is. But I just, I just informed you. I just educated you on the fact that it has to come with an the act, act or a threat. That you might be, ma'am, an act or a threat of think, violence. I can't charge you're you with ignoring. anything until I prove it. But yeah. I can ask you to leave if they're. No, you sleeping. cannot. You I cannot. Have somebody out here for you. Do you want to talk to somebody that's higher? I'm up? talking to you. Yeah, and you, you seem, and you seem, up. and you. I'm not charging you with anything, but I'm asking you to. Yeah, leave because you so can't, ma'am. Because respectfully, re respectfully, I'm not breaking any Connecticut general statute, so you cannot charge me with anything. I'm not and charging you, can, you with anything. I didn't okay. Say I was. Okay. I never said I was. I know you said I'm you weren't. You to leave. And I'm just I'm telling you that you couldn't. You're making the civilians uncomfortable here. Ma'am, you can ask me to threat. leave. I I agree. You can ask me. You can ask me to leave, but my response is no. Why? What are you doing here? Ma'am, it's none of your business what I'm doing here. You've been, you've escalated the situation. You've I'm escalated the situation. They asked me to come out here. You've seen me here before. When was that? You were on all these videos. Oh, what videos? All these videos that you posted. Oh, so you know who I am? I don't know your name. Oh, okay. I know you're a civilian that reports a lot of law enforcement. And there's Bradley, a, is there a problem with that? Yeah, Bradley no, International it's, Airport. Right yes. To do it. Okay, so but why are we coming at with something? No, wrong. And you're bothering the civilians. You're here. wrong. You're just wrong. About what? I, I'm not trying to be combative with you, but you're just wrong. You're About just flat what? out wrong. You cannot ask me to leave a public I, yeah, you place. Yeah, said I could. You said I could ask you. No, you can, you can ask. Oh, there you go. Okay, See? you can ask. Yeah. So okay. make sure you know what you're saying first. Okay, you can ask. So do you have anything else to ask me? Yeah, I am asking you to leave. Anything else? No. Anything else? I'm asking you to leave. I said no. Anything else? Why? Do you Just have no. Being here? There is no other. Is there is no other explanation, but besides the word no, ma'am. What ma is your business being here, ma'am? No. What is your business being here? Not answering any questions that yeah, I don't want to there answer. Is, there needs to be I'm, a reason for you to be in this parking lot. Not true. Again, you're you're, you're incorrect. And you're making people feel uncomfortable. You're incorrect, ma'am. I'm no, I'm not, because I've had many civilians come up to me and complain about you. You're incorrect. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that people haven't complained. Exactly. So how am I incorrect? Well, I'll take your body camera and see who complained to you, but. Listen, again, 
You can ask me to leave. I said no. I don't know what else we need to be discussing at this point. I said no. You know, I, I stay here. I know. Mr. Sean was justified in asserting his right to record in a public space, educating a trooper who tried to interfere. The key point is that public property, like the parking lot of a police headquarters, is owned by the government and accessible to the public, allowing Mr. Sean to stay there. However, things take a turn for the worse when Mr. Sean encounters the trooper and Sergeant Fay, who had assaulted him in 2021. Despite the lack of legal consequences for Sergeant Fay's previous actions, the narrative suggests potential complications as Mr. Sean approaches the main entrance of the headquarters. Guys, so we're gonna go around to the front of the facility here. Look, everyone, it's Sergeant Brian Fahey in the flesh. There he is, look at him. In the flesh, he's here. Hi, sir, how are you? Hey, how are you? You already told me you didn't have anything here. Oh yeah, I just gotta do some FOIA requests and things like that. Someone? A FOIA request for your body camera footage and Sergeant uh, Brian Fahey's uh, disciplinary record. Have you send it in, in, in writing? Yeah. Who's the guy behind you? I have to conduct. I have to conduct uh, business here, Sergeant. Sir, what can we do for you? Come on. Oh, well, you're the Sergeant of pistol, pistol Permits, aren't you? Come on. Go ahead. Come on in, sir. sir. Excuse me, sir. You have to get sir. out of the way. Sir, Excuse I know. Me, sir. I know your inclination is wanting to assault me, Excuse Sergeant. Me, sir. Stop pushing me. I'm trying to get in. I'm trying you to get in the building. You can't come in the building. You have no business here. I do have business here. Stop acting like a, like a, like a savage. What are you Back doing? Before I arrest Sergeant Fay is accused of assaulting Mr. Sean for the second time, using excessive force and abusing his power. These actions are considered law enforcement misconduct under 18 U.S.C. Section 242, a federal law that prohibits intentionally depriving a person of their rights protected by the Constitution or U.S. laws. Sergeant Fay's interference with Mr. Sean's entry into the police headquarters is seen as a violation of his First Amendment rights. According to the Four Analysis Doctrine, police headquarters, including their lobby areas, might be treated as places where certain speech-related activities are allowed. Blocking Mr. Sean's access is viewed as an infringement on his rights in this context. Additionally, the act of seizing Mr. Sean's phone from his hand is regarded as a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights, which safeguard against unlawful searches and seizures. To fully understand the events, there is a suggestion to review the assault instance in slow motion for a more detailed analysis. That's Her body camera's on. That's fine. Get you away like from the do door. You don't need to block camera. the door. Don't block the door. No one's scared of don't, you, Sergeant. I didn't say you were. Don't block the door. Don't block the door. Don't block the door. Just back up. Don't block the door. Don't block the door. Yeah, yeah. I'm not scared of you. Don't block the door. Do what you gotta do. Don't do block the door. Do. do what you gotta do, because I'm not scared of you, Sergeant. I'm allowed to come into this building. Correct. Thank you. Sergeant Brian Fahey just took my camera yet again. The coward that he is, he just took my camera yet again and stopped it from recording. But the officer that talked to us in the parking lot, her body camera was recording. We're going to make another internal affairs complaint on him. This is incredible. Right, exactly. It happened right over here, ladies and gentlemen. Right over here. Right here. Right where we're standing. And look at him. You can't control yourself. You're an animal. You're an animal who can't control yourself. You're disgraced to that bad. Um, he, he's going to talk to legal right now. Who is? Uh, him. Why are we going to entertain him? He has to formally request it, right? Just witness somebody get assaulted and their property taken from them and not do anything about it, trooper. Is that standard operating procedure? Because there's the criminal right there in front of you. If you'd like to place him under arrest, trooper. He just assaulted me and took my property and violated my First Amendment right. But no, these troopers aren't going to do anything about that, right? In this situation, we're looking at the rules laid out in Connecticut's guidelines for police officers using body cameras. The guidelines state that once a body camera is turned on during a police interaction with the public, it has to stay on until the interaction is finished which is when the officer is done dealing with the person involved. 
The guidelines also mention muting the body camera. It says that if an officer needs to turn off or mute the camera during an event that should be recorded, they have to explain why on the camera and include it in their official report. Now, in the case of the officer's interaction with Mr. Sean, who was still outside trying to get in, it seems like the interaction wasn't over according to the guidelines. The issue here is that it doesn't make sense for the officers to mute their body cameras during an ongoing interaction, especially since we're now left in the dark about any conversations with Mr. Sean. This raises concerns and suggests that the officers' actions should be looked into more closely. All right, so you can come on in. Thank you. Anything in your pockets, go ahead and take out. So sure. Please wallet, put that over here. Is Sergeant Brian Fahey one of those important people that we're, that's in this building, ma'am? The one that you just saw assault me and didn't do anything about it as a law enforcement officer? In broad daylight. You have to, down. You have to go through the metal detector. So I thought, so trooper, I'm, a, I'm gonna be on my way in a second. I just had a question for you. So you're telling me, I just wanna get it for the record, you know, for court documents, just have it memorialized here. You just watched a man assault me and grab my camera, interfering with a constitutionally protected activity. You're a law enforcement officer, took an oath to uphold the constitution. Are you going to do anything about that? I saw you get in his face as well. So I did see so you saw me you get saw it on body camera. Yeah, the body camera. We'll get you the body camera. That's for sure. You can see that you but you were there. Stopped him trying to get you from entering. He I'm allowed you, to enter into the building. Told you to get a report, right? He told, he told, me, told me to, to submit something in submit. writing. Yes. Yeah, I, but I'm gonna have a right to be here. They told you, but I have a right to come in here and conduct business. Thing? He has and no right to put their hands. He has no right to put his hands on me. You just watched a man. Listen to me. You watched a man. I'm answering your question. You want me to answer your question? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The only persons that are allowed to come in here is with an appointment, reports and records, and for the pistol, for first time pistol from every else we have to turn away. And what did I, what did I tell you I needed? Records, right? Records is not open today. It's only open Tuesday through Thursday. But somehow I spoke to somebody from because legal. Because legal wanted to talk to you. Okay, great. So what I'm saying is, how is this not, you saw a man put his hands on, did I put my hands I on him? I saw a man telling you not to be in the building when you were not allowed to be in the you, building. Did you watch him put because his hands on me or not? Did he put his hands on me or not? People did not tell us that you had anything Did he put his hands on me or not? After, and then they let you in. Ma'am, did he put his hands on me or not? Once I saw you do what you did. Once, what did I do? When you physically tried to stop him, open the door. I tried to come inside the building because I'm allowed to. Just like I'm not inside the building right now. I, I'm inside the building. talking to you. Because they requested you to come so, in. If you didn't have an appointment, I just want to know. Listen, I'm going to be on my way. I'm going to be on my way. The damage is. I was already assaulted. Did you watch? You watch him assault me. Are you going to do anything about it? Yes or no? Are you going to do anything about it? Then you're going to be held accountable. Are you going to do anything about it? Yes or no? In this situation, a police officer failed to fulfill her duty when her superior assaulted Mr. Sean in broad daylight. Connecticut's general use of force policy requires any officer witnessing another using unreasonable force to intervene regardless of rank or department. The policy mandates intervention using any necessary means, whether verbal or physical, to stop unreasonable, excessive, or illegal force. In this case, the officer should have intervened when Sergeant Faye aggressively confronted Mr. Sean, yelled at him, and blocked his entry to a public area. The officer also had a responsibility to hold her superior accountable for snatching Mr. Sean's phone. I'm just assaulted on camera in front of in in broad daylight for the second time. This is this is the same individual who assaulted me the first time and broke my my camera the first time. I came here for records and I was just assaulted again. How is this how is this lawful or how is this a good look for anyone here? This shouldn't happen. This this is unacceptable. I didn't do anything. I want to speak to him, yes. I would like to speak to him. Sure. Who was supposed to come down? A Lieutenant Colonel Davidson. Davidson? Davidson, yes. Davidson. Yes. Okay, all right. So, okay. no problem. Okay. I can't force anyone to meet with me if they don't want to. Thank you. Yep. Almost two weeks following the incident on June 28, 2023, Mr. Sean filed a formal complaint against Sergeant Fay with Internal Affairs. As of the current recording date, 
Internal Affairs is still conducting an investigation. However, as stated by one of the sergeants within Internal Affairs, regardless of their findings, their office will not have the authority to pursue any legal action against Sergeant Fay. On the evening of January 12, 2023, Officer Jack Lowry from the Bloomington Police Department stopped Bloomington, Minnesota resident Ricky Pouncil as he was driving home from the gym. The ensuing interaction was recorded by Officer Lowry's body camera. Hey, how's it going? Uh, do you have your driver's license proof insurance? I got you. reason why I stopped you, I just saw you on the uh, center lane there for a little bit. I want to make sure you don't get me driving. Watching traffic, we have people with no headlights. Yeah. Passing. Officer Lowry pulled over Mr. Council for supposedly straddling the center lane and driving a bit under the speed limit. Officer Lowry mentioned a Minnesota law about not driving too slow, but considering the light traffic and exceptions for safety, Mr. Council's speed might not have been a violation. Officer Lowry also said Mr. Council was drifting between lanes which, according to past court cases, could justify the stop even if there was no clear traffic violation. Whether the stop was constitutional would likely hinge on whether the court believes Officer Lowry's claim about Mr. Council's lane behavior. Head to tonight. <laughs> Going home? Your license all valid and everything like that? All good to go, right? With valid license and everything? Okay. Anytime, man. Okay. License status, valid. Rental car, pretty... Ricky, right? All right, hey Ricky, I got no intention of writing any tickets. I'm gonna to talk to you back here for a quick second. We'll get you out of here, all right? I'm just gonna talk to you back here. I'm, gonna, I'm asking you to get out of the car. Well, the thing is, I don't really need a reason. I know under... No, I don't. I'm bench 363. So, I just wanna to talk to you back here, back to your car. I'll get you all the information in a second, man. 363, Officer Lowry. Do me a favor, can you just come around the front here? No. Just, thank you. You just want to go back to my partner, just around the middle of the traffic or anything like that. Hey, I know it's cold out here. You might feel the need to put your hands in your pockets. I'll either ask you to put your hands out of your pockets, or I can either pat you down for your safety. Pat me down, whatever you want. Okay. The reason why I'm trying to talk to you out here is because when I tried talking to you the first time, you didn't seem super. Like I tried asking you where you're coming and going, you know? You said you're headed where? Back home? I'm going home. And, and is home with Egan? No, I have a house over here, man. I mean, all those questions are really not necessary. Hey, where, where is your address at, at home? Tell me I have an address over here. I just over here to do well, really you can follow me if you want. I don't want to follow you. Know, you it's I, like you're harassing me. I'm not trying to harass you. Yes, me. you are. I mean, I haven't did anything. Search me, I haven't did nothing. I, I didn't search you. I just patted you Yes, down. you did. You patted me down. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Lifetime Fitness. Lifetime Fitness? Yeah. What do you do for work? What do you mean what I do for work? I have my own business. What was what was up with the, like, the, the bag? Is it like a workout bag? Or, yeah, it's workout bags back there. Workout bags? Yeah. Like, how many bags are there? I don't know, three or four. Let me ask you this. Is there anything illegal in the car? No. Is there any... Uh, no, it's nothing illegal. So guys, none of that. Man, it's cold out here. I don't know. No marijuana? No, I don't smoke marijuana. No, no cocaine? No, no. no I don't do uh, drugs. methamphetamine? Dude, I do not do drugs. What's your name? What's I'm your Officer Larry. Officer Larry. I'm not sure why you're harassing me. I'm not trying to harass you. Yes, you are. You why? have me in the cold. I'm not trying to haven't explain. did anything. You got my well, license, me, man. It's cold as outside. You have it back. You have it back. It's cold outside. The reason outside. why I'm asking you these things is I want to confirm or dispel any possible uh, suspicions that I may have. I'll yeah, have my said, attorney contact you a lot. Okay, you have okay. a super cooperative with me, all that stuff. Bro. And, and you don't really want to talk to me. It's fine, but I just want to scratch, scratch all these okay. boxes, okay? Scratch all the boxes. There's nothing illegal in the car. No! Okay. Officer Lowry told Mr. Pouncil he wouldn't give him a ticket, but then made him get out of the car for questioning. While officers can ask people to step out during traffic stops, they can't drag it out for unrelated investigations without good reason. Officer Lowry said he had suspicions, like Mr. Pouncil not answering questions well, driving a rental, and having bags in the car. Legal history, like the 2002 Wiegand case and the 2015 Rodriguez case, says a stop should be related to why it started. Officer Lowry's suspicions might not cut it, as people generally don't have to answer questions. Having bags in the car or using a rental, as seen in cases like US v Ficus and US v Beck, doesn't automatically mean you can be questioned more. In short, a court might say Officer Lowry went too far by making Mr. Pouncil leave the car for unrelated questions since the multiple criminal indicators he mentioned don't seem good enough for suspicion. No, it's nothing. 
Dude, I, I want to. It's cold it's down a, here, and you have me out here for keep, no reason. You Ricky, don't have proper cause. No, you don't. You keep cut, you keep cutting me off, man. My intention right now is I want to search your car for any to confirm or dispel any suspicion. What that are you I have. searching my car? Hold on, let me, I'm telling you, no, you can't search you want my to, car. Okay, that's fine. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna call my canine, see if he, there's gonna alert. That's any, fine if that's what you want to do, okay. but you're doing it for no reason. Have, I don't have nothing in the car. Okay. Nothing. Not you have the right right now. You can hang out right here on the bumper of my car. You can lay in the back of my seat of my car with the windows down, with the door open, whatever you want. Dude, whatever search, you feel more comfortable with. Just search the car if that's gonna make you happy. I don't care. Can we just get on with this? Yes, we can. If you're gonna let, give me consent to search your car, now I want to make sure I'm not trying to coerce you into it. I, I want All you to know that it's cold yep, out I, here. I don't want to be in, in the car. I can get in the car. Okay. You have no reason to detain me. Okay, so let me get, so, so we're on the same page. You're saying that I have the right to search your car. Yeah, but you have no reason to detain me because I haven't did anything. Okay. You have the right to take away your consent anytime. If you don't want me to do it, you don't have to. I just said yes. Okay. If that's what you want to do. Hang out here with my partner. I don't want to keep carrying longer than I have to. We'll get you going, okay? Will you not tear the whole car up? Yes, sir. Mr. Pouncil initially said no when Officer Lowry wanted to search his car but later agreed when Officer Lowry threatened to bring in a police dog for a sniff. The legal context refers to cases like U.S. v. Brown and Knutson v. Commissioner of Public Safety, which say that searches are okay if the person agrees without being forced. The court also says that if the consent comes from intimidation, it's not real consent, but just feeling uncomfortable isn't enough to prove force. The scenario talks about Bumper v. North Carolina, saying that saying you have a warrant when you don't makes consent invalid. Even though Officer Lowry didn't claim to have a warrant, threatening to bring in a drug dog without good reason could be a problem. The argument is made that Officer Lowry probably didn't have the right to use a drug dog without a good reason, according to the Wigan case. The situation also mentions U.S. v. Lattimore, where a court didn't accept an argument like Mr. Pouncil's, but was concerned because there wasn't a good reason for the search. Despite Mr. Pouncil saying his agreement wasn't really his choice because of the threats, the conclusion suggests that the court might still say it's okay based on a not very strict standard for proving that the agreement was really voluntary, unless there are serious questions about Officer Lowry's authority and reasons for suspicion. Make sure it's unlocked. Thank you. All right, we're just about done here, man. Last question: the um, like the bag of pills, or whatever it is, like I was in the I think vitamins. Was in the or, bag. Yeah, what vitamins. Kind of, do you know what kind? Of, what, like, no, brand I don't. Name you they can are? take them if you want. I don't, I don't want to. Take them. I just want to know, do you know like, the brand name. I don't know. Them? What kind of vitamins are they? Just vitamins. No idea what kind of brand name they would be. Or? No, I do not. You can take them if you want, man. You can get them out of There's nothing wrong with it. Well, I don't want to take anything from you. It's not any. You know? <laughs> Alright, man. I'm not going to worry about them. Um, you got a card on you? I do. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to try to explain it to you anymore no. right no. now? Or you should... I'm my attorney to contact you guys. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? No. All right. Have a great night. You're free to go. Um, no taking nothing like that, all right? Officer Lowry pulled over Mr. Pouncil and stretched the traffic stop without a good reason, made Mr. Pouncil stand outside in the cold punitively, and used manipulative tactics to get consent for a vehicle search. Despite Mr. Pouncil staying relatively calm and respectful, Officer Lowry's actions damaged trust in law enforcement. Complaints were filed, but local authorities dismissed them. Officer Lowry got a C-minus for his behavior, urging him to understand the limits of his authority. Mr. Pouncil got a B-plus for handling the situation well, but agreeing to the vehicle search weakened his ability to challenge the officer. The incident highlights the importance of refusing consent to searches and shows how giving up rights during encounters can limit one's ability to contest an officer's actions. On January 27, 2021, Osama Aburas, an Uber driver and employee of CDR Wholesale, was traveling from California to Tennessee when he was pulled over by the Texas Department of Public Safety DPS, for reportedly tailgating the vehicle in front of him. During the traffic stop, DPS discovered that Mr. Aburas had $96,690 in cash in the vehicle. 
DPS detained Mr. Aburis while its criminal investigations division contacted an employee of First Horizon Bank in Memphis, Tennessee. The bank confirmed that CDR had a scheduled appointment and had frequently engaged in significant cash transactions throughout their long-standing relationship. After completing its investigation, DPS allowed Mr. Aburis to continue his journey. The following day, on January 28, 2021, Arkansas State Trooper Joshua Elmore pulled over Mr. Aburis once again for allegedly tailgating the vehicle in front of him. Mr. Aburis pulled over and Trooper Elmore approached the vehicle. Trooper Elmore is asking if he can search Mr. Aburis' vehicle. It's pointed out that generally American police can search someone's stuff without a specific reason but people have the right to say no. Even if Mr. Aburas was cleared by the Texas DPS the day before, it's stressed that different police departments have their own rules. So, despite Texas saying the money was legit, the Arkansas State Police can still do their own investigation. This highlights why it's important for individuals to always say no when officers want to search, as different police agencies might have their own ways of doing things. Hey, Trooper Elmore State Police, you're just falling too close. I'm sorry? You're falling too close to that car. Ah, uh, I can't, but I was going to try to bash it. I wasn't too close. I was no, you're too close to it, man. Too close. Do you have a license with you? Yep. I was too close. I like your car. Sorrento car, thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Do you have the rental agreement with you? That's in my phone. Okay. You coming from Kansas City? No, I'm coming from California, sir. Oh man, that's a long way. Yes, sir. Hey, you have any weapons on you? No. You mind hopping out for me real quick? Sure. Come here to this window, I'll talk to you over here, okay? What do you do for work, besides deliver cars? Uh, I do when I'm in town, I do Uber, plus I work for company, transportation company. Yeah. Deliver car, call a service. Now, sir, do you have anything illegal in that car? No. No drugs, no guns, something like that? No. <laughs> nothing like that. Would you have any problem with me searching the car? No. You're okay with me searching it? After a brief search of Mr. Abudas's vehicle, the trooper discovers a backpack filled with plastic baggies containing $96,690 in cash. Possessing large sums of cash is not illegal. However, Officers are trained to interpret significant amounts of cash as a potential indicator of drug trafficking. When combined with other evidence, the possession of cash can provide reasonable suspicion for investigation or even probable cause for arrest. For example, in the 1989 case of United States v. Socolo, the Supreme Court ruled that the possession of cash, when considered alongside other factors, was enough to support reasonable suspicion. The court explained, Paying $2,100 in cash for two airplane tickets is out of the ordinary, and it is even more unusual to pay that sum from a roll of $20 bills containing nearly twice that amount of cash. Most business travelers, we feel confident, purchase airline tickets by credit card or check for tax or business purposes, and few vacationers carry thousands of dollars in $20 bills. The court also found it reasonable to believe that the individual was traveling under an alias, and his travel plans from Honolulu to Miami for only 48 hours were deemed unusual. The court concluded, any of these factors is not by itself proof of any illegal conduct and is quite consistent with innocent travel, but we think taken together they amount to reasonable suspicion. Similarly, in the 2003 case of Maryland v. Pringle, the Supreme Court rejected the Maryland Court of Appeals argument that $763 in cash found in the glove compartment of a vehicle where cocaine was discovered in the back seat was not a factor in the probable cause determination. The court stated that considering the money in isolation, rather than as a factor in the totality of the circumstances, was a mistake. Therefore, while the possession of cash alone is insufficient to establish reasonable suspicion or probable cause, it can be considered as part of the overall circumstances. Okay. Uh, well, here's what we'll do. Uh, do you have the keys on you or are they in the car? It's in the car. In the car. Okay, well, I'll have you do is I'll have you uh, walk about 30 feet in front of the car and stay in the grass. If you need me, just holler for me, okay? 
Uh, do me a favor, just walk right up there, you'll be alright. Why do you have a large amount of cash, sir? Trooper Elmore reviews documents from Mr. Abu Das, who made large cash transactions that were unusual, but not necessarily illegal. Despite not arresting Mr. Abu Ras for a crime, the trooper sees his money through civil forfeiture. In Arkansas, the law requires a felony conviction for forfeiture, but Arkansas law enforcement can transfer seized property to the federal government under U.S. Code Section 881, allowing forfeiture without a conviction. U.S. Code Section 983 establishes a lower burden of proof for civil forfeiture compared to criminal cases. If the federal government succeeds, Section 881 allows the Attorney General to transfer forfeited funds to participating law enforcement agencies. In this case, the Arkansas State Police, the only agency involved, may receive a significant portion of the funds, even though they wouldn't be entitled to anything under state law. I can explain that. I have a receipt. I'm going to the bank. I got stopped in Texas. I have that thing. And they checked me out. Everything is good. How, how much is it? It's about close to 100. 100,000? And I have the number you can call in Texas. They checked me out for two, three hours. And they let me go. I'm picking up from one company delivering to the bank. I have the receipt. I have the paper. I everything. I have the number from Texas. I mean, Where's I, your receipt and stuff at? In the car. Can I show you? You say that receipt's in this bag, sir? It's in the folder? Yeah. It's in the folder. Okay. Okay. This is the bank I'm going to. I have an appointment this yeah. morning, but I'm late because I stopped yesterday. Yeah. And this is the company's paper. This is the receipt where I picked them from. And this is the company that I'm delivering the money to. Oh, I see all Operation one. papers. Yeah, that one. And this is the receipt where I'm going to with it. I hope you don't take offense to this. It's just, it's just very unusual. You know what I mean? Very unusual, but yeah, I'm not saying it's illegal. I'm saying it's very unusual. Trooper L. Moore goes back to his patrol car and tries to contact the Texas DPS to verify Mr. Aburis's account. Unfortunately, he is unable to reach anyone who can corroborate the earlier investigation. In the meantime, Trooper Moore makes several calls to different higher-ranking officials, including the DEA and the local prosecutor. During these calls, he informs another trooper at the scene that he doesn't think Mr. Aberas is involved in any criminal activities. Your money? No, I'm just delivering it. I wish to deliver it. Hey, let me make some phone calls. I'll try to get you out as fast as I can, okay? I'll call them too. Yeah, I'll call if them. If you call them, you save yourself for time, and you save me time. I spoke to God this good trip. Okay. Hey, this is Trooper Elmore out in Arkansas. I have a uh, car stop that one of your troopers stopped, uh, let's see, yesterday? What did it say? 27? 28. 28, it? Mr. Aberis had his money taken by troopers, and a legal complaint was filed in a county court to seize the funds. The case later moved to federal court where the government claimed drug involvement based on a canine indication and positive tests for cocaine on the seized cash. An October 2021 settlement agreed to return $38,676, forfeit $58,000, and required each party to cover their legal fees. How much cost number of the bill waiting? Four, four. We think on it. DPS let you go. Oh, thanks, good sign. We should let go. We all we both know it's weed money. Yeah. Believe me, I, I'm trying to save you because I don't want to deal with this as much as you don't want to deal with this. I appreciate that. I will appreciate that. I really, because this is one save you time and save me time and I'll, I'll make the bank today. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it if you, you know. Let me, uh, but just give me, we're working as fast as we can, okay? Okay. Just give me a Thank second. Thank you, I appreciate that. I don't know, I really don't think he's done anything wrong, though. I think, I think that's why he's so adamant that he's good to go. Is he, he hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah. I don't think it's him so much as a company. Trooper Elmore, while staying within his authority, got a B grade as the evidence for the seizure was weak. The situation highlights the problematic nature of civil asset forfeiture, where law enforcement may have incentives to seize assets, 
The piece mentions past cases of abuse and improper spending. It encourages the public to engage with representatives to address concerns about civil asset forfeiture. Mr. Abaras is praised for remaining composed, and CDR Wholesale is commended for taking legal action. The interaction underscores the potential negative outcomes even without criminal activity and emphasizes the need for public awareness and advocacy. Thank you for watching our video on two cases of corrupt cops arresting innocent individuals and having something to hide. We hope our message has resonated and made an impact. To continue supporting and spreading justice, please subscribe to our channel, like, and share this video with your friends and family. This way we can amplify the voices of those who have been wronged and create positive change in our community. Stand up and take action today.